Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and today we're going to be talking about that blood gene. Boas have been uh, basically a very popular topic lately. I've been getting a lot of requests, more Boa, more Boa stuff. I want to talk about this blood gene. I have a lot of good blood gene projects that were produced this year. I showed them to you probably when they were first born, but now they're starting to develop a little. I want to show you the genes, how they interact with each other. Maybe uh, even show you some projects that you might want to get involved with. Um, this is a really cool one that I did. Uh, it was a breeding of a dwarf locality, a Central American boa, to a, I guess you could say it was a, a mixed Colombian dwarf. And so these babies are not going to be all very small, though they, they can get bigger. But there is some really cool genetics in there. And I want to check it out. You know, Ron St. Pierre is the one who kind of discovered the, the blood gene by accident. He really wasn't even a, a boa breeder at the time. He just kind of was looking through bags of stuff that it was imported. He saw some Central American boas that looked a little different. And matter of fact, he didn't even want to go through the bags. His wife, or his girlfriend at the time, I think, said, well, let's look through some of these bags. And they saw these, these, these boas that looked a little more red than normal. He grabbed them, he bred them, he proved that they were genetic and recessive, and then he sold the project for almost nothing. And, you know, I think like a couple of years later, he was at a reptile show and he, and he saw these, these things with an enormous price tag on him. And I think he regretted that decision, but he is the guy, you know, who we credit with finding that blood gene. Thank God he found it because man, we got some serious red stuff going on in our boa collections these days. Let's go into the uh, state room and check out a really cool litter. This is a uh, hypo blood, also known as a bloody salmon. It's, uh, 66% head anery type 2, aneurysmic type 2. This is from the patternless line of Russo's uh, bloods. I got this from, I got the parents from Vin Russo. I produced this female in 18. Been growing her up. Hopefully try to breed her probably next year. You could tell she's got almost no pattern. Um, he calls it his disappearing pattern line. Really nice looking blood. I mean, this is an adult. Adults do not retain this much red normally. And she's really, really nice, exquisite. She's got a nice big meal on her too. She just ate the other day. And I'm going to show you her sister that just produced a litter for me this year. Now, this is exactly the same thing as I just showed you, essentially. This is, except we call this a plasma. This is a hypo blood, or bloody salmon, that is a visual aneurysmic type 2, or we call anery 2 um, female. So she's a, uh, essentially, and she might even be super hypo, so she could be a triple homozygous animal. So she's blood, anery 2, and, and at least hypo. And we call this a plasma. She produced a beautiful litter uh, for me this year. I bred her to a paradigm blood. Now these are dwarf boas, but, and I usually keep my dwarfs as dwarfs, but I wanted to venture out of the box a little bit because I have a project that you guys have seen called the Paradigm Blood Project, and we're gonna, let's take a look at what a Paradigm Blood looks like. Now here's my Paradigm male. Once again, the Paradigm, just to remind you guys, maybe who are new to tuning into this program, this is a blood, which is a recessive, combined with the Paradigm combination, which is a 100% head sharp albino, combined with 100% head boa woman caramel tea positive. When you combine these two genes together, one copy from each, they line up on the same allele, we call that. They produce this super form called the paradigm. This is a paradigm blood. I decided, you know, I've produced paradigm bloods before. We have a lot of them. I wanted to get the hypo gene and the anery gene into this paradigm blood. Now, I wasn't sure how to do it. And then I said, you know what? I have this double, possibly triple homozygous animal, the the plasma that I showed you before. And I said, if I plug in this paradigm blood, we're gonna get all bloods, first of all, because both both of these animals are bloods. We would get 100% head anery twos, okay? And we would also get what we call parahets, which meaning that we would get either the bowen caramel 100% or we'd get 100% sharp albino. You know, you don't know which one you're gonna get because when you have a paradigm, it throws one or the other gene. We don't know which one we're gonna get. We're gonna get one of them. And that's exactly what we did. We produced bloods and hypo bloods that are parahet and het for anery too. The advantage of that is so that we can down the road produce some of these hypo paradigm bloods, or what we call paraglobe bloods, which would lighten these things up even, clean these things up even more, 
And then if we actually threw the anery gene on top of that, we would produce, ugh, it, 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 it's almost getting complicated now. We could produce, um, I guess we could produce bloody snows, which is hypo blood, um, sharp albino anery too. Or we could produce, I don't even know what you would call it. You would call it a, a T-positive snow, a T-positive blood snow. <laughs> so there's a lot of great potential. So let me show you this, this clutch. You've seen it when it was first uh, birthed, but they've been growing and progressing, and I want to give you an update. Okay, now this is a, um, a blood that's parahead. That means we don't know if it's 100% head for sharp albino or if it's 100% head for bowum and caramel T-positive albino one or the other, we're not really sure. Um, it doesn't matter, it's definitely 100% for one of those and it's definitely 100% head blood. So the idea, now this doesn't have the, I don't think it has the hypogene and I think this is just the blood, but it might, it might. It's, it's, we have to let it shed a few times. It's got an interesting side pattern, if you see, she's gonna strike at the uh, camera because she doesn't like it being put in her face, but she's got an interesting side pattern where there's a really cool, let me see if I can pick her up without getting bit. You see this little side pattern here? Like the side surface of her is really, really, really cool. And it's kind of delineated. She's got these connecting saddles here. And she's definitely got the attitude of the Central American boas when they were babies, <laughs> that's for sure. Let's leave her here. Let's let's bring out an, uh, a hypo blood that's power head and 100% head blood. All right, now here's a, what I believe to be a hypo blood that's also power head. Look at that stripe down its back. That is, you know, that's indicative. The hypogene definitely causes the saddles to kind of be, or disarrayed. And sometimes you get the striping too. I don't think this is, I, there's, there's no chance that this is a, a super hypo um, because the, the father was not hypo at all. But you can see the difference. Although this one look, is looking lighter and lighter. I originally called this just a non-hypo, just a blood, but this one's definitely lighter, but this one is, is kind of light to it, and it's very clean. So they both could be hypo blood, but the saddles on this one are not as disrupted as this one. This one has really got some cool. This is this is my <laughs> this is my holdback male for sure from this clutch. Now the, I got to hold back a male and a female because I got to breed them together because we want to produce. Obviously, we'll produce all blood. Some will be hypo, some will be super hypo, and then obviously depending on how that. Um, Anery gene lines up. We could get anery stuff, and we and it, how the uh, whether whether you get a 100% head sharp or 100% head bellworm and caramel from them. We'll see how they line up. I'll probably keep two females and a male back, but you get the picture. This one is definitely going to be available, and he's up on Morph Market. There's a bunch of these on Morph Market, and they're going to get better and better. These guys as they grow. Um, but this is a great project because there's so much potential. You can produce, like I said, the Paraglow for sure bloods. Um, if we do get the um, the albino in there, we could produce. You can produce the albino bloods. You can produce fire opals, which would be the hypo albino bloods. And then if we obviously get that anery gene in there, we're going to have snow versions of all these. So, and this is using the sharp line, obviously. So, just so much that can happen here um, with this project. Let's take a look at one more snake. All right, here's my uh, holdback hypo blood parahet, 100% head blood as well. Once again, another almost complete stripe. The other one was completely striped. This one kind of ends a little toward the tail, but also very interesting pattern. Very, very light colored. I liked her a lot also. So I said, you know what? I'll take her, but hold her back and I'll hold that male back I showed you. The other ones are exquisite though. So this whole litter just was uh, an amazing, amazing looking litter of blood boas that we got in hypo bloods. And of course, the real potential lies in what the het form of what they're carrying, which is that head anery too, and the para head in them. That's the potential for future. You know, if you guys wanna, if I, I would advise you to pick up a pair of these things while they last. I think they're gonna go pretty quick once people have an idea of what the potential is here. And you know what happens invariably? No one says anything, no one, you know, reached out to me. And then one day everyone gets it up there, you know, in their head, hey, this is a great project. And then you know what happens? There's nothing left because everyone buys it. They're all gone already. So check them out guys. Uh, they're available at Morph Market or just contact me directly. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And a little bonus footage here. This is my Phoenix, also known as the Hypo Blood Honduran T-Positive. So this is your T-Positive Caramel Albino with the blood gene. Okay, and then we add in the Hypo and we get this, what we call Phoenix. 
really nice. Beautiful color. This is an adult. This female might actually breed for us this year. She, you can tell by my hand. She's got some nice size. Remember, this is all Central American dwarf bone, so she's not going to get much bigger than this. And she's uh, ready to hopefully have her first litter this coming season. Blood Gene has got unlimited potential, guys. Uh, it's a great project to get involved with in these hypo bloods and the bloods that are parahead uh, and also head for annery too are going to be uh, I think something very special in the future uh, luckily we have a bunch of them we'll probably get a few pairs out there to some people who act quickly and if you get in on this project you might actually make some real cool stuff in the future all right guys that's going to be it for today uh, you know it's a Friday here things are going to kind of really mellow it looks like it's going to rain outside you know we're kind of in a, at a point at the end of the summer now. Where we're almost getting ready for breeding season. We're not quite there yet, but we lot of got a lot of cool stuff. There's still some ball pythons hatching. I want to show you some of these animals that we produce now oh, that are getting bigger. Hi. Oh, we got Logan Palumbo here. Hulk Logan is here. My son. Yeah, you Say hi. Me. Hold on. Come here. Say hi to everyone. Oh, he's eating some ice cream. And he's coming into the snake room to visit daddy. All right, guys, I hope you guys are having a great time. Have a great weekend. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit the like button. We'll see you back Monday morning. Yeah.